Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Okay, um, let's start off with the quarter main living room. I was about to say Dan Quam Justin. You got Ned, Tracy, Geo, Lois, Brooklyn. Feel like I'm missing someone. Now, at first, they talk about John. They, they call him Jaggered or whatever, right? And, you know, you talk about the murder and everything like that. And, you know, Lois is like, you know, this is such a tragedy. I'm just like, is it? Um. Then Tracy, you know, she, she's really upset because she's like, you know, somebody, you know, my, my bed was all like messed up or whatever. And I don't know how it wound up happening. And then I think either Brooklyn or Jill or somebody tells her the reason why her bed was so messed up was because Sonny and Carly were um, playing mattress tag. So she, <laughs> she looked like She's about to either vomit or just straight up die at that point, um, which is actually pretty hilarious. I think that's probably the only good part in this entire living room scene, right? And so there, you know, they're talking about it and everything like that. And this woman, okay, you know what? If anyone is really sensitive to cursing or just <sighs> me about to go off, I want to sit there and just kind of take a two minute break. About a minute, give or take. So, this. <laughs> uh, this woman. This fucking bitch walks up in the quarter main mansion and starts correcting Olivia, right? No one likes that, okay? I'm just going to sit there and tell you right off the bat. And, you know, granted, I'm assuming that this must have been like some sort of millennial or something like that. No one likes that shit. You're dealing with two Benson Hurst chicks. I honestly tell you the truth, the way she just kept going and going and going and just being such a smart ass, I was hoping that one of them was going to whoop her ass. Particularly Olivia, because she seemed like she was about to do that halfway through. So she walks in, and I'm just not that thinking, is she some sort of like family member or whatever? Because she seems like she's just way too comfortable walking in there acting like that. Long story short, turns out that she is um, a language coach and she's there for Lois. Now, at first I was like, oh yeah, I remember her sneaking saying like, you know, she wanted to do some of her accent or whatever. And um, I remember her calling. So I'm just to think, okay, well, she, she's the one that hired her. But she didn't. And it turned out it was Tracy. And so, you know, she, she talks, you know, she's like, you know, listen, you need to lose the accent, you know, the sales would be a lot better and blah, 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 which is really insulting when you stop to think about it. That, that accent is something she grew up with. It's something she should be proud of, not something she should feel ashamed of. But Lois is still feeling bad about that bitchy ass um, caller that came in there. And was, you know, like, making fun of her accent and everything like that. And so, you know, long story short, she decides to do it. But throughout this entire conversation, uh, first of all, I'm sitting there thinking, how long? First of all, I'm like, I must be getting punished, right? It must be me getting punished. You ever just had a character just came on, just rubbed you the wrong way, like, right off the bat? Like, Stella, when she first came on. She annoyed the living shit out of me. Chanel, on Days of Our Lives, when she first came on, the, the, the first actress or whatever, like the, the way the character was, she annoyed the living shit out of me. This chick, who for some odd reason kept deciding to correct Olivia and Lois, and at one point, um, 
Ned, I'm just like, how long are we going to have to sit there and put up with her ass? Like, that's... Oh, God. Um... <laughs> I can't. I just, I, I, I seriously can't. Um, but yeah, she agrees. So, you know, unfortunately we're stuck with her. <sighs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so Jordan is, is really working overtime to try to find, um, who this who this guy is? Um, who I guess Isaiah, whatever I think that's his name. Who this guy is? And at some point, you know, she talks to Dante and and tries to ask him to look the clues and stuff like that. Even trying to call it a WSB. Like I'm just like, wow, you are really going above and beyond. And then when she talks to TJ, she's like, the reason why she's trying to do it is that she feels that she'll get back some sense of power. Because she was powerless to do anything with the whole um, TJ and everyone losing the baby, taking away TJ's pain and everything like that. And she feels like this is some sort of way to like gain it back. And I'm like, okay, um, that's kind of a stretch, but sure, whatever, I guess. It's really, it's a huge stretch, but okay. Um, the, the killer that was following, um, Isaiah, I think that's his name, is actually dressed up as, like, some sort of, like, scrub nurse or whatever. He's about to come into the room, and Liz is there. Liz is like, uh, what are you doing here? She has course him out or whatever. I don't know if she locked the door or something like that. But, you know, he's on the phone, and he pretty much is like, yeah, no, this, this guy's not going to wake up. I'm going to make sure of that. Um, now, the person who Nina caught was Rick. Rick comes over there, and Rick is pretty much, you know, sees Ava, and he's like, hell to not. I ain't doing it. Nope. Mm -mm. We'll definitely sit there and say this is a conflict of interest. Now, Nina was like, you know, you owe me because, you know, you tried to rob me blind, and da 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 Apparently, a storyline that I was not privy to because I took a break from GH, but... He was like, I can't do it, and, um, no. So he leaves, and, you know, at first, Abe was like, you know, listen, I'll just go on a run. And he was like, you can't do that, because, you know, you're not just leaving poor Charles, you'll be leaving Avery. And he was like, you know, why are you sitting there being so nice to me? I, you know, I betrayed you and everything. And Nina's like, you know, listen, I'm doing it because Will will give me a second chance. I'll give you a second chance as well. And I'm also just like, you know, yeah, their friendship is definitely odd because reasons, but if we're going to be honest, their relationship should not be ending because of Sonny. Out of all people, like, he's, he's just not worth it. He's really not. Um, okay. So... Jocelyn is getting caught up with Trina on all the craziness that went up happening, um, you know, that night. And the both of them thinking that most likely Sonny did it because, I mean, John was being way over the top, which I have, a, I have some things to say about that. If I remember, I'll say it towards the end. But Gio comes in, and Gio pretty much tells Jocelyn and Trina that you know, about the whole thing that wanted up happening downstairs with Tracy and basically tells her that um, her mom and Sonny um, hooked up. She's in disbelief, right? She's like, oh, this this can't be, you know, like she's, she's just like flabbergasted or whatever. So she's kind of pissed off and she's all like, you know, Sonny hurt my mom and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, well, you know, your mom also hurt Sonny too. So let's not, you know what I'm saying? Let's not start throwing stones. Um... Gio apologizes for some odd reason. She's like, why are you apologizing? Like, you're just a messenger. Like, why, why are you so sorry for her? Honestly, to tell you the truth, the writer should be sorry that they're not giving Gio a better story. That's who should be apologizing, but whatever. He leaves. 
And Josh was like, you know, let's let me get to the bottom of this. And Trina's like, you know, at the end of the day, Sonny and Carly are two grown ass consenting adults. Bottom line, stay your ass out of it. You know, it's your mom's business that your mom sit there and 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 do her, you know. Mind the business that pays you, and it's damn sure not her. So have a relationship with Dex. Do whatever it is that you're doing. And stay out of grown folks' business. There is a point where Trina does sit there and try to compare their relationship to Sonny and Carly's relationship or, or compare Sonny to Dex. And I was just like, in no way, shape, or form does that make any sense. And I almost sat there and I was like, did somebody actually, like, it's hard to believe somebody actually wrote that for Trina. Like, I just feel like Trina would not sit there and say something like that. Like, not that I know the character intimately or whatever, but I was like, I, I feel like she would not say that. So, like, does somebody just have a typo when there was not that right in that? Like, it, it literally didn't make any sense. Justin's like, you can't really compare those two. I was like, yeah, you can't. And that really does not make any sense. Anyway, she leaves. She talks to Olivia. Well, she asks Olivia, and Olivia's expression just says it all. So towards the end, she winds up seeing Carly, and she starts, like, judging her with her eyes and everything like that. I'm like, you know what? I have to tell you the truth again. I don't give a sh I don't give two flying shits. That was good. I don't give two flying fucks if she's, like, maybe 20 or 21. Or as a grown-ass woman, you are still a child in her eyes, and um, you really shouldn't be sitting there judging her. You really shouldn't. So you need to sit there and calm that shit down. Uh, you know, as I was sitting there thinking about the stuff that I was going to say, I was thinking about that particular scene, thinking about how I was going to sit there and pretty much just kind of drags Jocelyn's ass. I remember a very unpleasant conversation, and I ain't letting this shit go. I remember a very unpleasant conversation when I was on JOJ Media's channel. And I had the very unpleasant conversation with this goddamn woman that was built like an iPhone charger. And if you've been to my live streams, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, it just made me think about that for a hot minute. Anyway, um, so after Rick talks to TJ, asking how him and Molly are doing and, you know, just finding out that, um, you know, Molly's about justice and everything like that. And, you know, she she doesn't want to sit there and stand still or whatever. I do pretty much just kind of giving them an update. Which, in, in on some level, I understand where Molly's coming from. Because Molly's the type of person that doesn't like to sit there and wallow in her grief. Um, TJ's handling it a lot differently. But then he talks to Rick. I mean, then he talks to Liz. And it's like, you know, listen, John is dead. And we just saw... We just saw Alexis throw away a gun. I'm an officer of the court. We have to do something. We have to sit there and, and, and report it. And I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Let, me, let me get this straight. You're sitting right. there saying that you want to report the mother of your child to the cops. Are you out your goddamn mind? Like, Really? I mean, I know you and Alexis don't really get along and stuff like that, but for the sake of Molly and given what she's been through, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's not a good idea. I'm pretty sure that's just foul. What the hell are you doing at this point? Um, also ran into Dante. They didn't really sit there and say anything. They just kind of just stood there. Dante gave him the ug mug, just kept moving. He did want to go into the crash site, and he picked up a phone. So, Carly wakes up, and she already wants some coffee and everything like that, and long story short, she is not happy with this whole alibi thing. She's not happy with that. She's not happy with trying to tell the kids and the family and everything like that. She's just not happy with it, but she's going along with it because, you know, they share kids and stuff. Now, at some point, Diane comes in, and Diane's like, yeah, I'm not going to believe this. So, you, you, you can't just make this a one-time thing. 
This can't just be a hookup or whatever. It's got to be an ongoing affair in order to solve this. Again, Carly ain't happy, but she's doing it with Sonny and the kids. Um, and then, you know, she complains and gripes about it for a little bit, but she, she agrees to do it. Um, and, of course, when she leaves, she runs into her judgmental-ass daughter. Ah, okay. Also, um, Diane comes over to um, tell Alexis the good news that Ava recanted her story. So, you know, um, Christina won't be sitting there in charge for the death of her own child or anything like that. But now Alexis is like, okay, now we have another problem. She doesn't sit there and say, I don't know if she actually told Diane what it was, but eventually she left and Christina came downstairs and um, she asked about the gun. Well, she, she asked where she was and then she tells her about the gun. She tells her, well, she tells her about John being dead and, you know, Christina's like, well, okay, one down, one to go. I'm like, Besides your mom, I don't think you should be saying that to anybody else. Um, and, you know, she tells her about the gun that she, that she found. And at first, she was worried that she was going to use it on herself. You know, she does sit there and ask, you know, did you, did you kill John or anything like that? Um, what the hell else went up happening? There was something else that she went up. Hold on. But she, you know, Christina Snitta asked him, like, where's the gun at? Now, Alexis did sit there and say, well, you're on probation right now. So if you got caught with that gun, your ass would be in jail. So she said that she threw it out. Now, Sonny, Sonny calls, um, Sonny calls Jason and says that, you know, the gun is missing or whatever. But, he says it like it's a huge problem. The gun that Sonny used was a different gun than the gun that Christina used. Or the, the gun that Christina took. But Christina didn't use the gun. So, unless he murdered somebody else with that gun, I could have swore he said that might be a problem, but I don't understand how. I mean, the gun that he used, he put it back in the case, so it's just like, okay, it was a missing gun and everything, but like... You know, I, I don't understand how that will come back to sit there and, and do anything to him. Now, you let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong about that. Anyway, I feel like that's pretty much about it. I can't think of anything else that wound up happening. Now, if I forgot anything, write it down in the comment section below. Not too sure if I'm actually doing a live tonight because I do got to wake up super early. And my sleep habits or my sleeping has just been somewhat rocky and kind of shitty if we're going to be honest so i'm not too sure if i'm doing a live tonight but i will sit there right in the community tab in case you know in case it changed my mind i decide to do it but uh yeah let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below of this episode and i'll see you in the next video